Good morning, Moms of Masterbooks. My name is Anna, and I'm going to share with you how to use God's design for heaven and earth. Um, I have my daughter Emma with me today to help me out. God's design for heaven and earth has a teacher's guide, a student book, and then there's also the beginner's guide. And um, we are using this with my younger son, who is on about second, third grade level, so we're using this. And then also we are using um, the God's Design Teacher's Guide and the God's Design um, Student Book. The thing that I'm guilty of many times is I do not read the beginning of the book or the back of the book to know how to properly use the course. I have told moms many times, hey, you should do this, and I fall guilty of it myself, is I just say, hey, here's the book, there you go. So um, in the front of your teacher's guide, if you go to page five, it tells you about the course. Whoops, just ripped mine. So it tells you about the course. It gives you an idea of what the course is about and how to teach it. It also gives you um, how to teach so if you can see if your student is a auditory learner if your kid student is a visual learner or a kinetics learner it gives you ideas on how to properly teach him or her it shows you how to introduce the topic and review the topic and then also to ask questions and make a hypothesis so the goal of god's design is Found on page six, which I love, it says it's critical to teach children the truth of the Bible, how to evaluate the evidence, how to distinguish fact from theory, and how to realize that the evidence, rightly interpreted, supports biblical creation, not evolution. We need to help our children see God as creator of the world around them so they will be able to recognize God and follow him. And I love, I love that in this book. Um, it also, in the front of the book, how do I teach creation versus evolution? And it also gives you the different theories that there are, if you can see that. And then also the myths. So this is great information for the parents to read. It also gives you the seven C's, which I really like this also. understand the creation science worldview. Then you have your um, schedule, which I love this. If you go back to about page 381 in the back of the teacher's guide, there is 377 in this one, um, a master supply list, and it tells you the lessons that they are in also. It also has resources. So you can see, oh, we're excited, and then uh, a resource guide to give you some enrichment. Um, there's books, movies, field trip ideas, and other science resources. Um, some of our favorite resources are the Buddy Davis DVDs. This one is Ice Age. We have not opened it yet. And also, we like to use the Wonders of Creation, the new astronomy book. And the whole series goes great with it. Um, in the beginner's book, it is laid out a little bit different. It's simpler for the kids to understand. And on page six of that is the teacher instruction. So it explains the course and how to get the most out of the course. And then also there is a master supply list. And it tells you the lesson, let's see, the lesson that it's in, that supply is in. 
And again, there is the schedule, which I love. In the back of the beginner's book, there's the answer keys. And then also there's additional resources and it tells you, whoops, there's optional activities in here also. And this one, it says requiring an adult. So you can see that it will let you know if you if it requires an adult. So there's some great, and it tells you what um, section it would go with. Then also there's answer keys in there also. Now in the student book, if you go to page nine, again, it explains how to use their book to get the most out of it. Let's see. Oh. And you can see these over here, the little um, icons. The icons match up over here on this side. So the younger grades are only going to do these three, and then the older grades will do the taking it further. Same thing in the book. It tells you, it tells you um, the older kids will do over here, and the younger kids will do this, those icons. So we started with uh, the universe. I let my children, there's three sections. And I let my children um, pick the section they wanted to start with. And they wanted to start with um, the universe. So you can see over here, I crossed that out because my younger kids will not do it. So I just put a big X in it so that way they know and they don't get confused. Um, something I do with my son when we're reading, we keep a notebook. It's great for uh, building vocabulary. It's great for copy work. And um, so you can see that he wrote astronomy and then he, I asked him what astronomy was and he said it's about the stars, the moon and planets and he even drew a rocket. We um, discuss the questions um, together and we go over what we have learned and then also when he my older kids we go over the worksheet God's purpose and we pull out our Bibles and we go over what um, the reference verses are for my younger kids he just drew pictures for each one of what he what God made and the seasons he wrote the seasons he wrote the month over there you can see that's his favorite month because it's his birthday and then also um, my little little kids they just scribble and draw and they will also um, we use the um, God created um, coloring books that I got PDF off of um, master books and I print out, right now we're doing the world and the universe, and I just print out a page, and they sit there and they color it, and they feel like they're doing school with us. But also when my um, son is doing his notebooking with it and coloring, I will write down sun and crayon, and they will draw to kind of get them involved too. Um, if something's not working for my kids, I'm easy, I can modify it to fit their needs. If there's something they don't understand, sometimes I'll explain it to them. If it's really not important, I say, let's just move on because um, the goal of all of this isn't for them to test and it isn't for them to know every single detail. 
it's to give them exposure and it's to give them an idea and to see God's creation. And that way they have a foundation, especially for um, the younger kids to build that foundation so they can see God's creation and see God's glory and everything. And then that way also um, they remember little things. Oh, astronomy. I know what astronomy is. Oh, Big Bang Theory. I know what that is. And they, they, they do remember that way. If your children are not learning, um, the vocabulary words are very big. If they're too big, have them draw pictures, have them write simple words, have them do something easy. They don't necessarily have to write every single vocabulary word to go with every single um, definition. Um, we are very hands-on, so we try and find a hands-on thing for them to do and keep things hands-on. Um, we have a telescope that we use. We have um, different videos and books that we use also. And um, we will cut things out of magazines here pretty soon to add to the uh, notebook. And then also um, my older kids, because they are in high school and they don't necessarily need this and we've never used um, God's design with them, my older son, Cash, who um, is in 11th grade, is helping me teach it. That way he can get a teaching credit for it. And he's very hands-on and loves to do this kind of stuff. So what better way to um, for him to learn than to teach it? So we are doing that also. Um, if my kids get something wrong or um, if your kid gets something wrong, just have them correct it. It's not a big deal on the worksheet if they don't get it right, if they don't um, have the right answer. Again, it's just really about exposure and learning um, to love learning and to love God's creation. And um, there are tests and quizzes in here that you can use as open book. You can use them as review, um, anything like that. Even in the front of the book, it says that um, you can take a longer period of time to cover all the material or choose to only do one or two sections as a unit study. So if that's what you're doing. God's design is really good for um, more of a family style learning. It's really good for um, if you have older kids and younger kids. Um, looking online at all of the different um, God's design books, the heaven and earth and life are more for these are the easier books. So if you have younger kids, I would definitely get the beginner's book and do these. Um, the other two, the ecology and chemistry and physical world are more geared towards the older kids. There's more complex things in there. So um, that would probably be seventh and eighth grade, even maybe sixth grade uh, with a parent's help. But definitely these younger, the um, heaven and earth and life are good for families with younger kids because you can modify where you need to. So that is how we use God's design, heaven and earth for our family. Um, we like to keep it simple and not, what's the word, complicate things. <laughs> <laughs> and just spark that love for learning. And uh, they do like to dig deeper. They do like to watch the movies. Um, God's design for life, there are so many creation movies um, that are on masterbooks.com um, that we have watched with our kids and they love it. There's also um, the Wild Brothers. My boys love the Wild Brothers uh, DVD set and she did too. And that went good with life because they were out in the jungle and um, God's design for life. Also, um, there's Ice Age, there's astronomy um, DVDs, and there's just all sorts of resources that you can tap into if you would like to go further, if you'd like to dig deeper. Um, yeah, there's no, there's really not a set way to do this course as long as your child is learning and making it your own. Do you have to do heaven and earth before God's design for life? We did God's design for life um, in a co-op last year. So we did do beginners and um, the regular version because we had a wide uh, range of um, older kids. The, our, the high schoolers did the uh, biology and then life was with eighth grade and under. So 
we really liked the God's Design for Life, and I would suggest doing that one first because it's there's the human body and there's plants and there's animals, and I know a lot of kids really like that. Um, if your child's struggling with the plants part, I would do the human body first, spark that interest. Also, sometimes if you have um, seasons, sometimes like right now it's really hot where I am, so um, we would do the plants later in the season and do the body or the animals uh, before that. So, so, well, thank you for joining in with me and thank you for uh, seeing how our family uses God's design for heaven and earth. And I hope you have a blessed weekend. Thank you. Bye.